What's up everybody? This is Bjorn Bjorholm coming to you from ASAN Bontai Nursery here in Nashville, Tennessee. I've been asked by the good people at the Bontai Kunst Hamburg to put on a demonstration, a video demonstration of a tree here. Now they originally were going to have an exhibition this summer, but of course because of the coronavirus that got canceled. So in lieu of that exhibition, they've asked me to actually style the tree as a video demo. So the theme for the video here is going to be Bontai at extreme locations. So I thought this Rocky Mountain Juniper here would be the perfect tree to style for this demonstration. Now this tree was collected in the state of Wyoming about five or six years ago by the good guys over at Backcountry Bontai. Now the tree is actually a very interesting Rocky Mountain Juniper, not only because the dead wood is interesting and fantastic on the tree, but the foliage on this tree is very unique. Most Rocky Mountain Junipers that we work with have very floppy, very sort of saggy, elongating foliage and it's quite difficult to work with. This tree though actually has very tight, upright, upward growing foliage, which is quite rare. It actually almost looks like a mix between Kishu and Itoigawa from Japan. So whenever you're working with junipers or really any species of trees, you can have a spectrum of foliar coarseness. And with this particular tree, it's on the very nice fine end of that coarseness spectrum for Rocky Mountain Juniper. So as you see the tree right here, it was actually planted in this bonsai container, which is a tokonami container about a year ago. And this was actually sort of the original design that I had in mind. But over the last year in looking at this tree more and more, I've actually found better angles to the tree. And I think there are more interesting features to be shown on this plant. And it's going to tie in really well with this theme of bonsai at extreme locations. So we're going to take this tree from sort of a standard looking bonsai into something that's much more extreme, much more interesting, and will fit the theme of this demo. So first things first, we're going to switch the angles around a little bit and see if we can find something a bit more interesting. Okay, so as the tree is planted right now, it was actually planted in here, as I said, about a year ago. So it's had time to adjust, but the original thought process behind this planting angle was to create kind of a standard looking basically an informal upright, almost kind of a, a leaning style tree, so nothing too extreme. Um, and it was planted on this angle to get the tachiagari, which is the first portion of the trunk here, off of the perpendicular. Originally, it was a little bit more straight up and down, so we leaned it just slightly to the left there. But over the last year, like I said, I, I really had time to look at this tree and kind of figure out uh, new and better angles to the plant. There are a lot of really interesting features that are currently hidden by this particular planting angle here. So for example, one of those things that's really well hidden right now but that's actually very cool is this internal section right here, sort of the middle portion of the tree. There's a lot of really interesting striations in the dead wood here. You can see the curve of the live vein sort of twisting around and down from the base of the tree up to the middle section here, but you really lose that interest here based on how it's planted. So what I want to do is tilt this tree a little further forward to bring these features out, and we're going to lean the tree a little bit more to the left to make it more extreme, to really tie it in with this theme. So I'll show you what I mean here. We're going to tilt this forward just slightly, all right, so you can see this here. That also brings this back branch way further up towards the front. And I'm actually thinking here about this branch maybe potentially getting rid of this back here and turning this into an extreme deadwood feature that really stands out, sticks out uh, above the tree. <laughs> Okay, so this is what I've decided for the angle change here. So essentially we just leaned it quite far forward and then we rotate it just a few degrees clockwise. That to me draws your eye to the most interesting features on the tree. And what we're gonna try to do is create a picture frame around those interesting areas with the remaining foliage. So the next step here is gonna to be to remove the foliage that we don't need in the design. So as I just mentioned a couple minutes ago here, I was thinking about removing all of the foliage on this back branch here to create a very powerful and interesting gin. And now that we've changed the angle, I think that that's gonna be the best decision. So next step here, I'm gonna go through and cut off all of this foliage here. We're gonna leave all of these gins quite long to begin with. And as we get further along in the design, we can make a decision as to whether or not we wanna shorten some of these or potentially even wire some of these newly created gins into position. Now, one thing I want to mention too, when you're cutting off a big branch like this on a juniper, you got to be aware of 
the live vein that's feeding that particular branch. So if you cut off a large branch, the live vein is likely to die at least a portion of the way back down the trunk, if not all the way down to the base. Now this particular branch right here, I'm not really worried about when I kill all of this off. It's connected to a very thin live vein that's actually connected into the larger live vein that runs around the front here. So in other words, what you see emerging from the base down here is the main live vein that actually feeds all of the foliage out on the left side of the tree. What's feeding the foliage at the top here is actually around the backside of the plant here, and you won't really notice it at all once I kill this section off. As a matter of fact, it'll make the live vein a little bit thinner down here from the backside, which is not necessarily a bad thing because currently this live vein is quite thick. It's actually a little too thick for the diameter of the trunk, in my opinion. If we're creating extreme bonsai, we want the tree to feel as if it's barely hanging on to life and having a very thick trunk and a very thick live vein sort of takes away from that aesthetic and that feeling. So again, the next thing we're gonna do here is kill off this branch. Okay, now that we've killed off this back branch here and turned it into a gin, the next step is gonna to be to remove the remaining unnecessary foliage on the left side of the tree there. So I wanna kinda of walk you guys through what I think is going to be the design of this tree, and that's gonna dictate, of course, what we cut off here. So first and foremost, we've got you know, a very directional tree that's really moving to the left. The majority of the foliage, obviously, is on the left side of the tree, but I don't wanna turn this into kind of a windswept look. I want it to have a nice balanced design to it. So some of the branches on the right side of the tree here are going to be utilized in the design to give us a sense of balance here. So for example, this branch right here in the very front it's basically blocking one of the more interesting parts of the tree that we're trying to show off, that section here that I mentioned earlier. So what I wanna do is instead of dropping this down to cover this, what we're gonna do is kind of lift this up and over, I believe, into this area to create that first part of the picture frame that draws your eye back into this interesting area here. Now, in doing so, we also need to create a backdrop to that interesting area. So for example, this branch to the rear back here, we're likely going to drop down into this area here so that your eye doesn't go through the tree, beyond the gins, and out the back of the plant. I want it to stop. I want your eye to stop at just the right spot. Now, the issue with this back branch here is that it actually is something called an edda gin, which basically means it's a live branch with dead wood intertwined down the length of that branch. So that type of branch is very difficult to move and manipulate. So we're gonna to have to assess that a little more closely and see what we can come up with as a solution. Now the remaining foliage on the far left side of the tree there, that's very heavy. We're gonna be removing at least a good 25 to 30% of that foliage. Now, depending on the juniper species that you work with, they'll tend to revert more or less to juvenile foliage if we cut too much off. So in the case of this tree, you know, we removed a good section of the plant here. We're gonna take another 25% off of the other side. So altogether, we're looking at probably removing close to 50% of the foliage on this plant. It's kind of right at the edge. I have a feeling the tree will probably revert somewhat to juvenile foliage over the course of the remaining growing season here, but I'm really not that concerned about it because within another growing season to two growing seasons, it will revert back to adult foliage. So this is very typical when you're doing a first styling on a Yamadori juniper like this, you will get some reversion to juvenile. It just part of the process. So let's go through and start eliminating the branches that we don't need and then we'll assess that back at a gin branch and figure out how to manipulate it into place. So up here in the upper portion of the tree you can see we've got a large branch that's protruding from the interior of the plant and actually is the highest point on the tree right now. This is a little bit stiff here and it's really not in a good location. It's actually coming out of the same point as this branch here, which is the one we're going to be twisting back to start to create that sort of picture frame in this area here. So thinking this branch right here really isn't necessary. This is one of those that we can go ahead and eliminate. So I'm gonna cut this off and we're gonna turn this into a gin the same way we did with that large back branch on the right side of the tree.
So on the far left side of the tree right here, you can see this is our directional branch right here, but of course it's very, very full. So in keeping with our theme of bonsai at extreme locations or in extreme environments, I want to reduce the foliage mass here so that it looks like a tree that's actually growing in an extreme environment. So I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit closer here and kind of explain my thought process as to which internal branches, which secondary and tertiary branches I'm going to be removing off of this branch to turn it into our directional branch for the tree. All right, so here is our directional branch here. I'm going to rotate this a little bit so you can see to the interior just a little bit better here. So you can see it emerges from the trunk up here. It's quite thick, comes down. It's got decent movement to it. It bifurcates here. This is the first branch right here that bifurcates to the rear. And then you get a little bit further out and it bifurcates again. It actually trifurcates. It puts three branches out from the same location here, which is really not an ideal situation. So I want to remove one of these three branches right here. Now, if you notice here, this one on the left is quite thick. This one here is about the same diameter on the right side here, but maybe a little bit thinner. And then the one on the far right here is actually significantly thinner. Since the first branch, the first bifurcation further back up on this main branch here comes out on the left side of our main branch, I want to go ahead and create kind of an alternating pattern down the length of this branch. So I'm going to remove the one on the left side here so that then we have left side, right side, left side, right side down the length of the branch. So this one right here is going to be the one that we remove. So a majority of the rest of the branches on the tree I'm going to keep, or at least the larger branches, I'm going to keep as part of the design. But in order to get the wire on there more easily and see the structure a bit better, I need to clean out some of the crotch growth on the tree. So typically what I'm going to do here is just start at the top of the tree and work my way down. We're going to remove stuff that's coming out of the crotches of the branches. I'm also going to remove any elongating growth where it's just a long sort of scraggly branch with a small tuft of foliage at the end. And I'm going to remove any heavy upward foliage that's coming out of our downward lateral branches. That's going to thin out this tree significantly more so we can see the structure and then get the wire on. So this is what I typically want a juniper bonsai to look like after I've thinned it out in preparation for wiring. So if you look at the initial foliar density to what we have now, there's a significant difference between the two. But as I said before, I'm not really that concerned about this reverting to juvenile foliage. It might, it might not, not that big a deal. We can always wait and it will revert back to adult foliage or scale foliage. So the next step here is going to be to start the wiring process. And I always start with the first directional branch on the tree because that really sets everything up for the rest of the design of the plant. So as I mentioned earlier, our directional branch is going to be this guy way out here on the far left side of the tree there. So in the case of this branch, it's actually a relatively thick branch and I really do want to bring it down and in quite significantly. So in order to prevent this from breaking as part of this process, we're going to be applying raffia to this branch. So I've wetted down some raffia. I usually tie for a branch this large anywhere from say 10 to 12 strands of raffia together and then I start at the interior of the tree and work my way out. So I'm going to zoom in and show you guys how this looks and then we're going to apply some wire to this tree. All right so this right here is the directional branch of the tree where it emanates from the trunk. You can see it comes out curves up and then back down and just out of the front side of this branch we actually have a secondary branch here that's coming up and over the top. Now normally I would eliminate something like this, but for this particular tree, this branch right here that's coming up out of the front is actually going to work really well tying the apex of the tree back in with the interior of the plant and drawing your eye back to that interesting part of the tree further back towards the middle there. So I definitely want to keep this here. Now I am going to be dropping this down somewhat significantly here. So just for safety's sake and the protection of this branch, I'm going to apply raffia all the way from the interior here out to the exterior, just in case. This really right here is going to be the 
uh, point where there's going to be the most pressure uh, after we bend this branch down. So I want to be extra careful here not to damage or break this section right here. So the directionality of the raffi here is actually going to be quite important. We're going to be dropping this branch down and around towards the front there. So what I want to do is make sure that we're going actually counterclockwise on this branch. And really you can see, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but in person you can see that the branch actually itself twists counterclockwise. The live vein emanates here, wraps up and around, and then twists around the backside to feed the foliage out here at the end. So it's going to make the most sense to keep that consistent as we apply this here. So to make this happen, what I'm going to do is actually use this branch right back here where we've created the nice gin to begin with here, a little bit of shari. I'm going to use this section right here to actually anchor the raffia onto. So I'm going to split the raffia around that. And then we can start this process of going counterclockwise on this branch here. Now, the reason I also want it to go counterclockwise here is of course, because I want the wire when we apply it to the branch to tighten as we go. And because we are twisting this down towards the front and back towards the interior just slightly, going counterclockwise is going to aid in that process here. So as I apply this raffia, I am overlapping by about half on each turn and pulling tight each time I go around here. That'll make sure that we get full coverage here and it also gives us kind of an added layer of protection to the live tissue underneath. So in addition to the original branch here that we just applied raffia to, we also need to apply raffia to this branch on the right side of the tree. This is that branch, remember, that we're gonna be twisting up and over to start to create that picture frame around the center of the tree. So the raffia on this branch actually needs to go on clockwise because this branch is going to be rotated clockwise back into this area. If it's being rotated in one direction or the other, again, make sure that you're applying the raffia in that correct direction and the wire in the correct direction so that it tightens as you twist it. So again, I'm gonna start the raffia from the interior of the tree here. We're actually going to attach it from the same location that we attached the original piece of raffia from, and we're gonna take that out onto the branch here. So the next branch we need to assess here before we start to wire this tree is this guy back here. This is that one that is an edajin that I mentioned earlier in the demonstration. You can see we've got the dead wood running along the upper side of the branch and the live vein running along the bottom side here. I actually wanna take this branch and bend it somewhat significantly down and towards the rear to again, create a picture frame or at least a backdrop for the picture frame to draw your eye to that dead wood in the middle. So there are a couple of ways we could approach this. We could take a wet rag, wrap it around the area that's going to have the most pressure once it's bent, leave it there for a few days, let it soak up that water and then slowly bend this over time or for the purposes of this demonstration, I think it's actually gonna be better to try to separate the live tissue from the dead wood here. So we're gonna be using a branch splitter like this, and I'm gonna go along starting at the very end of the branch here and separate the live vein from the dead wood. So I wanna make sure that we do this very, very carefully here. Of course, I don't want to kill this branch off or bite into the live tissue if at all possible. All I'm trying to do is separate the two. From the back side of the tree here, you can see that it's significantly more flexible when I bend it here. And we've actually managed to keep the dead wood intact here, which is great. So that'll add a little bit of extra flavor to the rear of the tree in terms of having a nice feature back there. So the next step here, I, again, I'm gonna put raffia on this branch. Now, depending on the thickness of this branch and how pliable it is after you apply a process like this, you may have to run a backbone of aluminum or copper wire down the length of that branch and then put 
raffia around the outside of that. But with this particular branch right here, it's already very, very flexible. And I really don't foresee it snapping here at the end, you know, fingers crossed, knock on wood here. So I'm just gonna apply the raffia rather than putting the backbone of wire down the branch. Now, once I get the raffia on, of course, I'm gonna apply wrapped wire around the outside of this branch to provide a little bit of support. And then we'll use the guy wire to actually crank it down into position. So I've inserted a screw in the backside of the tree down at the base there and then attached a guy wire here to drop that branch down a little bit further here. So the next step is then going to be to actually set up the outer end of the pad here. So as you can see, the whole thing is sloping on a downward angle, but what I wanna do here is start with the outer edge of the pad, particularly in the front here, and lift the tips just a little bit. The idea here is we're gonna fan everything out essentially like a hand. So the longest section of the branch here, the portion of the branch is gonna be sticking the furthest out to the left side of the tree is this section right here. So we're gonna go ahead and set this first. I'm gonna lift the end of this up, and then all of these secondary and tertiary branches here that have been wired out, we're essentially just gonna fan these out into a hand shape and then lift the tip up just a little bit. Now the tip growth out here, I'm going to leave all of this intact. I'm not going to cut any of these tips back. We're actually gonna let these grow uh, unimpeded for the next couple of months here to make sure that the tree survives and that it's nice and healthy because we've cut so much growth off the rest of the plant. We need to make sure that uh, we're allowing that tip growth to remain intact to increase the health of the plant or at least return it to its original vigor. All right, now as I'm setting the branches here too, I'm not necessarily looking to put all of these on the same horizontal plane. I wanna stair step this down, perhaps stair step it up as I get further up into the pad. And what we're gonna be doing here is layering some of the foliage from the backside up over the top here to create a very full appearance. So for example, this very long, uh, sort of scraggly looking branch right here is going to sit perfectly somewhere down in this area to fill whatever gap we have right here. All right, so what I'll do here is take some of this growth from the rear I'm going to lift this up, bring it around. And as I do this, what I'm trying to avoid is spaghettiing things too much. I just want a very simple overlay from the rear to the front. That way we don't run into developmental problems in the long run by spaghettiing things around too much. So in addition to creating picture frames around the most interesting parts on the tree, we also want to use the foliage to hide the flaws in the tree. So this branch right here that I moved back up and over to draw your eye to the interesting section here in the middle of the tree, in doing so, I've actually exposed a flaw and that is the first portion of the branch right here is very visible. Now to shorten the visual length of this branch, I did take some of the foliage from the end of this branch that I brought around and I whipped it back to the interior. That helps shorten that visually to some degree, but this section is still a little bit too long for my eye. What I wanna do next is use this smaller branch right here, whip that down into place to block this portion of this branch visually from the front. It's gonna give the tree a much fuller appearance and make it appear as if it has more internal branching than it actually does.
So here we have a very similar situation in that we've sort of exposed a flaw or created a flaw in the tree here with our initial placement of the first branch. So if you notice here on the first branch, you can actually see the full length of that branch running from the trunk down to where the foliage actually emanates way further down the branch. Now the way that I've placed this tree and positioned it, this gin right here actually cuts across that particular branch. So it does break it up visually to some degree. However, it's still pretty visible and still really in your face, particularly right now because it's covered in bright colored raffia and wire. What I wanna do is bring this branch here down and in to help cover that and hide that to some degree. Again, it's gonna give it the appearance that it's much fuller and has more internal branches than it actually does. Okay, so this is the final product after the initial styling of this Rocky Mountain Juniper bonsai here. I think that it fits pretty well into this theme of bonsai at extreme locations. One way that I sort of brought that out in this tree, of course, was by getting rid of a lot of foliage on the right side of the plant here. But a secondary way of doing that was really compressing the foliage mass on the left side of the tree. So typically with a bonsai, I would lower the first branch significantly more, maybe pull it in a little bit closer to the trunk. But in keeping with this theme, I wanted this tree to feel as if it's been battered by the wind. Again, not in a windswept style necessarily, but at least you can tell that it's been affected by the wind to some degree. So I wanted to make sure that that foliage mass was kept relatively narrow as if the wind has been blasting it in one direction and keeping it from being able to escape and elongate and grow in different directions. Hope you guys enjoyed this demonstration. I want to thank all the great folks at the Bonsai Kunst Hamburg. Thank you so much for inviting me to do a demonstration and I look forward to working with all of you guys in the future. Till next time, take care. Mm -hmm.